We thank God for the opportunity that He has given us to come to you with the good news. The good news is changing lives. This good news is touching lives all over the world, all over this nation. Thank God for those of you who have been responding, those of you who called, you know, when I talked about the upper room churches, a number of you called, have called the different pastors. Somebody called from Ginger, called one of our pastors and gave their life to Jesus. That is what it's about. We are about getting as many people as possible into the kingdom of God. I was telling people that, you know, when you see pictures of some big churches and you see those churches full, you can be deceived that eh, there are so many people who are saved. But the truth of the matter is that there are still more who are unsaved than those of us who are saved. That's why we can't stop to preach the gospel. That's why we have to come to you every Sunday. That's why we challenge you to support us, to become a partner with us as we preach the gospel. I challenge you to become a partner with this ministry and stand with us as we preach the gospel on television, on radio and other places. Now we are preaching the gospel with the churches that we have started. And God is doing an amazing work. You know, Upper Room Ginger is up and alive and going well and growing. You know, you can get a hold of the pastor and call him on that number on the screen. If you want to be part of Upper Room Ginger, Upper Room Entele is up and going. We thank God for the lives that are already being changed. You can get a hold of that contact and get in touch with them if you want to be part of Upper Room Entele. Upper Room Kampala is doing well. We thank God. They meet every, uh, every Thursday from 5.30 to 7 at Ebal Hotel. Uh, Upper Room Kabale is doing well, growing by the grace of God. Upper Room Barara today, we've had our first service. God is amazing. Great things are happening. And we invite you to be a part of these locations. Ginger uh, is Sundays from 5 to 7 p.m. Entebbe is Mondays from 5 to 7 p.m. Kampala is Thursdays, 5.30 to 7. Barara is every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Kabal is every Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. When you contact our ministry, we'll get you details of each of those locations. God is doing amazing, amazing things. And we give Him all the glory. We thank you, our precious partner. You make this possible. You help us to reach somebody that you could never reach with the gospel. You help us to reach one extra person. With every other church that is planted, it's an opportunity for more people to give their life to Christ. With every other TV program, it's an opportunity for somebody to hear the gospel. With every other radio program, it's an opportunity for somebody to hear the gospel. And we thank God for what He's doing. I've been talking about what we need to believe for us to be saved. You know, if I can take you back just for the sake of those who might have joined us for the first time on this broadcast. The jailer in Acts chapter 16, he was in charge of Paul and Silas. They had imprisoned them, of course for no good reason, for just preaching the gospel. They found themselves in prison. Now at midnight, Paul and Silas, Bible tells us, they were singing hymns and praying and every other prisoner was listening to them. Then suddenly there was this great earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations and the doors were open and the chains fell off their hands and their feet. And, you know, instead of running out, they stayed there. And the jailer, when he saw the doors open, wanted to kill himself. But Paul told him, do not harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer, when he saw these criminals that were with Paul and then Paul and Silas who had an opportunity to escape and they did not take it but instead stayed there. He took Paul and Silas to his home, washed their wounds and afterwards asked them a question. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And they told him, believe on the Lord Jesus 
and you will be saved. And in my book, Saved, I write about what I believe are the things we are to believe on the Lord Jesus and we will be saved. And I've been talking about that for the last few weeks and uh, I believe that they have been a blessing to you. We believe that He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You know, you don't have to carry the weight of that sin. Jesus at the cross, He carried the sin of the whole world. Don't carry it. Jesus carried it. Come to Him. Ask Him to be your Lord and your Savior. Ask Him to take away your sin. Ask Him to forgive your sins. When you do that, He will forgive you. You will become a new creation. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. After you come to Him and ask for forgiveness, then there is a scripture that starts to apply to you. It's in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. When you are in Christ Jesus, you are not condemned. It's good news. It's great news, in fact. You're not condemned. God looks at you and it's as though you have never sinned. Because Jesus took your sin. We believe that He is Lord. For somebody to get saved, you must confess that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead and you will be saved. What does it mean to believe that Jesus is Lord? You believe in that He is actually God. You're believing that He is the creator of the universe. You're believing that He is a God that needs to be obeyed. You're believing that He is a God that needs to be served. He is a God that deserves the worship. He's a God that you have to totally surrender to. Now, this is more than just saying Jesus is Lord. You can see that it requires a commitment on our part. It requires surrender on our part. But it is surrendering to a life of greatness. It is surrendering to a life of blessings. Believe that He is Lord. Believe that He became a sacrifice for your sins. We've talked about that. He took our place. What should have been our punishment? Isaiah says the punishment that brought us life was upon Him. The chastisement that brought us peace was upon Him. Jesus became the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And the Bible says, not only for our own sins, but for the sins of the whole world. Jesus became the atoning sacrifice. Now, what the whole world needs to do is to accept what he did, to receive it, and to believe it. We believe that God raised him from the dead. This is extremely important because some people don't believe that. Some people don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. In fact, the resurrection is what makes Christianity authentic. We are the only religion whose leader is alive through resurrection. The others, their leaders are dead. But ours, he's alive. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We believe that through Jesus, God has reconciled us to himself. Yes. Because of Jesus, God is not mad at you. The Bible tells us that all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself. That us is talking about you. And gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. That by what or did we may aim to bring others into harmony with him. I'm reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It was God, personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself. Not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them. And committing to us the message of reconciliation. The gospel, the good news is that through Jesus, God reconciled you to himself. God decided not to count your sins against you. Think about that for a moment. Think about what you have ever done. 
Think about the things you can't tell anybody. Through Jesus, God canceled those things. But you have to believe it. You have to receive it. The, 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 the record of your sin is canceled through Jesus. That is great news, don't you think? It's great news. Okay? We believe what he said about himself. That's what I talked about. I started talking about last Sunday, the previous Sundays. What he said about himself. What he said about the kingdom of God. We believe him. Now, one of the things he said is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but should have eternal life. I want to tell you about eternal life. You know, some people think that eternal life is some life they will receive after they die. And when you think like that, you postpone getting saved. It is these people that you hear that when he was about to die, he gave his life to Christ. When you're at a funeral, you'll hear somebody give a speech that goes like this. Ah, we thank God, we thank God for his life. We thank God that yesterday, before he died, he finally gave his life to Christ. He has lived 70 years without God. 70 years of pain, 70 years of sorrow, 70 years of all kinds of, all kinds of things. And then, before he breathes his last, he says, I have got saved. The mindset is, eternal life starts the moment I die. Eternal life starts. So I have to be prepared for it. So they will say, I want to enjoy my life. Do whatever I want to do. And when I'm about to die, I get saved so that I receive the gift of eternal life. That is, that is the mindset behind that kind of behavior. But you see, when you live like that, waiting to get saved at the end of your life, of course those who get saved at the end of their life, they go to heaven. We have a story in the Bible. We have precedent. The man who was crucified next to Jesus. He looked at him when they were about to die. He said, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. That guy, God saved. He got a ticket. This time not from a preacher, not from who? From Jesus himself. So today you'll be with me in paradise. But how, how many people get such a chance? How many people get such a chance? I work in hospitals and we see people who, you know, they become unconscious and they won't get such a, a chance. You, people get accident and they won't get such a chance to get saved at the very last day. You know, some slide into unconsciousness and they don't get such a chance. You have to use the chance when you still have it. And one of the ways to motivate you, one of the things that should motivate you to use your chance is that Eternal life does not just start after you have died. Eternal life starts today. The day you give your life to Jesus, eternal life starts there and then. It starts there and then. There's a scripture in 1 John chapter 5. It says, this is the testimony that we have. That God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has that life. Let me say that again. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. This life is in his son. He who has the son has that life. He who does not have the son does not have that life. You know, eternal life, when you have Jesus, you have that life. It does not start after you die. You have that life. And in John chapter 17, Jesus defined what eternal life is. John 17 verse 3. He says, and this is eternal life. This is what you receive when you get saved. This is what is on offer. This, the verse says, and this is eternal life. 
It means to know, to perceive, to recognize, become acquainted with, and understand you, the only true and real God. And likewise, to know him, Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, whom you have said. That is it. This is eternal life. That's my message for today. This is eternal life. This is eternal life. When we are preaching to you, this is what we want you to get. This is eternal life. To know God and Jesus whom he said. Now, this is not talking about a casual relationship. Knowing, when the Bible uses the word know, it is using the highest form of intimacy. In the Bible, the word know is used when describing intimacy. For example, it says, And Adam knew Eve, and they got saved. So it's the intimacy, the, that kind of intimacy between a husband and a wife, that kind of deep knowing intimacy, that is what it's talking about here. That this is eternal life, to know God and Jesus whom he said. You can be intimate with God. You can come to a place where you know his thoughts, where you know his heart. You can come to the place where you know his voice. Where you can, can you imagine like you talk with God in the morning and he talks back to you. Like you converse with God about your day. You converse with God about your struggles. You converse, converse with God about what you're going through. God tells you about why you're experiencing certain things. He tells you the plans He has for you. He tells you what He wants to do with you in the next few years and things like that. You can come to that place where you spend a day talking with God, where you are in the car and you're having a conversation with God, where you are in the shop, where you're where, and you're having a conversation with God. This is eternal life. To know God. And Jesus, whom he said, and this knowing does not come for nothing. When you know God, it brings strength to you. The Bible says actually in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 that the people who know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do great exploits. The people who know their you do you know why we have this TV program? It's because of my knowing God. Because I know his voice, on one of those days when I was praying, I had him tell me, you have to preach. You have to preach on television. Actually, I started on another television station, and which you didn't know, which you are not watching. And then when one of those days when I was praying, then I felt God tell me, now you need to go on, on the national broadcaster. And so many other things that we do. We now have churches in different locations. Because I know God, I had the Lord speak to me and say, now it is a time to start planting churches. And now we have an upper room church in Entebbe, we have an upper room church in uh, Jinja, an upper room church in Barara, in Kampala, in uh, Kavalianga. We are going to start others. Yeah, because we want to start 1,000 upper room churches all over the world. All that happens when you know God. The people who know they are God, they shall be strong and they shall do great exploits. There is a strength that you get from knowing God. There is a strength that you get from understanding God. There is a strength that you get from, you know, from being God's friend. You come to the place where Jesus says, I no longer call you servants. I now call you friends. I'm inviting you to friendship with God. That's what eternal life is. Friendship with God. You can confidently say, I am God's friend. He is my friend. I talked with him yesterday. I was talking with him in the morning. I hope to talk with him in the evening. I've been talking with him. You can have such a relationship with God. Eternal life. Eternal life. You can be a friend of God. And I want to invite you to this relationship. I want to invite you to this friendship with God. Jesus said, and this is eternal life. To know, to perceive, you know, that talks about a deep relationship. To recognize, 
to become acquainted with, to understand you, the only true and real God. You know, when you know God, you will not be shaken by circumstances. This is where Paul reached and said, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him until that day. When you know God, there is a strength that you have. Even as you go through adversity, you are able to say, nothing shall separate me from the love of God that is mine through Christ Jesus. When you go through trial, when you go through different challenges, that relationship that you have with God becomes an anchor that you stand on, becomes an anchor for your soul. You have a firm foundation in God. Friendship with God. You can become a friend with God. That is what is on offer. You can understand Him. You can understand His ways. You can know His voice. You can, you know, many of you pray, but what you think is prayer is just talking to God. You're always just talking to God, just talking to God. But you can come to a place where you talk with God. You want to enter into this relationship. Do you want to ask Jesus to become Lord of your life today? Do you want this gift? It's a gift. Eternal life is a gift. You don't work with it. He says, God so loved the world and gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but should have eternal life. If you believe in Him, then you'll have eternal life. I want to give you an opportunity. Say, Dear Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I confess that you are Lord of my life. Today I ask you to come to my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I confess that you are Lord. I receive forgiveness for my sins. Today I receive the gift of eternal life. I am a child of God. If you have prayed that prayer, you are born again. You are a child of God. Congratulations. I want to hear from you. We want to disciple you. We want to help you grow. And if you're in any of these places that has an upper room church, we shall be happy to have you. If you're in Marara, we shall be happy to have you at the upper room church every Sunday from 10 to midday. We meet at Besania Grounds, opposite Little Woods Inn. If you're in Kavali, we shall be happy to have you at the ministry center every Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Contact that number on the screen. If you are in Ginger, we shall be happy to have you at the Upper Room Church Ginger. Contact that number and they'll get you details. If you are in Kampala, we shall be happy to fellowship with you every Thursday from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at the Emerald Hotel. Contact that number for details. If you are in Entebbe, we shall be happy to have you. If you are in uh, uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. of Monday, contact that number. If you're in other places, just reach out to us uh, to our, on our ministry lines and we shall connect you to a church in that part of the world, a Bible believing church. We shall get you material. We shall stand with you. We shall pray with you and you will be a child of God enjoying the gift of eternal life. God bless you so much. I look forward to meeting you next Sunday with a good news broadcast.